We're here at the Star Dallas Cowboys headquarters, Bree Maranthus, Mike Fisher, Mike Zimmer is, hey, I just realized you guys are, your names are kind of Kind Mike of. Mike Zimmer, Mike Fisher. Yeah, you're stretching it, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Zimmer is officially the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator to be introduced today. What do you think the Cowboys are getting with this hire? One of the things that jumps out uh, right away, for those of us who've known Mike Zimmer for a long time, and I have for 30 years, yeah. for guys who played with him, for guys who coached with him, uh, mentored him, and worked under him. Some guys aren't going to like this. Uh, in fact, Bill Parcells said it, mm -hmm. and Darren Woodson said it. <clears throat> Woodson's point is, he's not here to be liked. Yeah. It's just not his style. That when Woodson played under him, uh, that they weren't, they weren't friends. They became friends later, out of respect. Now, he is good friends with Deion Sanders, and that was a friendship that, that lit up right away. But he, you work for him, yeah. uh, and, and he rides you, and he rides you hard, and he rides himself hard, too. Uh, Parcells went even beyond that and saying, there, there's going to be some guys that, that won't play for him. They, they, they don't want to play for him. Wow. Um, very different than Dan Quinn. Very much so. Very likable. One of the guys. Backwards cat. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, avuncular is the word I use yeah. for Quinn. He's like your uncle. Yeah. Now, he was also your friend and your teacher and your, your, your mentor and all those things. And he was energetic and he could even yell at you, as you know. We're not, not saying that he didn't have toughness to him. He certainly did. Yeah. Just like it's not fair to say, Mike, it's not like Mike Zimmer's a jerk. Yeah. He just thinks there's a certain way to do this job. Mm -hmm. And it's to drive, drive, drive. Uh, and not everybody loves that. What's going to be key here, uh, and I don't think the game has changed. It's not like the game has passed him by. He's 67. He's been out of coaching only a couple of years. Right. But he will absolutely need to find a way to go plug in very specifically to two guys. Micah yeah. and Diggs. Right. Uh, and and Diggs and Micah would both tell you, Dan Quinn, I love Dan Quinn. I, I, I Bland, I love Dan Quinn. He was like an uncle to me. He was like, okay, right. now you're going to get a different kind of uncle. Mm -hmm. And if you will go along with Mike Zimmer's telling you, mm -hmm. if you will let him help you, Trayvon, Bland, Micah, all of you, you will be better for it. Take all the good stuff from Dan Quinn, now take all the good stuff from Mike Zimmer and put it into one big gumbo pot and yeah. watch the good stuff that can come out of it. <laughs> Can't wait to see how it all turns out. I'm sure at this point, everyone has seen Evan Smith's comments, how he's disappointed in the Cowboys culture, frustrated. What do you make of Emmett saying all this? Well, and he uh, joins a pile of former Cowboys. Mm -hmm. You know, Aikman has said this and Irvin has said this to some degree. Dion, Dion told you this three years ago, yeah. that there, there's just something about the makeup of this group uh, that they're not built for the moment, I think is one of the phrases that Dion used. Mm -hmm. We can also talk about a lack of clutch. I think Dion once brought that up as well. But Emmett goes a little bit deeper into the culture yeah. thing. Uh, and and I believe on one of his interviews, he actually used my phrase, I couldn't be more proud, hashtag 53 brands, yeah. which uh, doesn't mean that guys are selfish necessarily. It doesn't mean that guys are bad guys. It means to me, what it's always meant is, you come into this building and you look around and you see that, that this is very much about marketing and sales That's and branding. Right. And you're tempted as an individual to think, well, if the whole organization is built that way, why can't I have a little bit of my piece? And that's what Emma Smith's talking about here. Um, he mentioned podcasts. Right. He mentioned branding. And it was interesting that he did. Um, Micah, at the Super Bowl, on I think it was on Friday, said, yeah, we got to get rid of the distractions. But he said that on his podcast, yeah. on a stage, at Radio Row at the Super Bowl. Well, he, he's, it, it's, it's ironic mm -hmm. that he either doesn't understand that he's talking out of both sides of his mouth, or maybe he meant, that's the last podcast I'm gonna ever do. <laughs> it has been pointed out. I've seen um, the, the bro -bo mama drama people, the family members say, well, back in the day, they had radio shows, didn't it? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I was there back in the day. <laughs> they didn't have, Cowboy players didn't have radio shows in 1990. They didn't have radio shows in, when they were when they were one in fifteen, mm -hmm. uh, one in thirteen, whatever. Well, not a lot of people want to hear from you when you have one. That's that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Well, I guess people want to hear from Cowboys now. Mm -hmm. uh, they were America's team then. They're America's team now. But that that phenomenon of guys starting to blossom and become their own thing happened after they won a Super Bowl. Right. 
not after they've gone 29 years without having yeah. won a Super Bowl. Crazy. And, and, and again, um, the, one of the differences is you can just kind of go down to your basement and turn on podcasts and go. So there's there's no... Yeah, the world is different. The, the, the world is different. There is a lot more distractions in general right. for most athletes and for most, most people. Um, it, it, it's a great point. It's a tree with branches on it. The radio show, you didn't have uh, a million people commenting on it yeah. to your face right. like you do now on Twitter. Yeah. You had... You had a hundred people show up at the restaurant and cheer for you yeah. for what you said. Yeah. That, that was the feedback you got. And again, I hosted a bunch of those shows. We were involved with uh, everybody from, I, I mean, I did, uh, I did a Jerry Jones show. I did a Mark Tuane and yes, Mark Tuane, yeah. the very uh, private offensive lineman and Dale Hellestray, the long snapper yeah. that uh, Wally and uh, Leon did that show. So I was involved. Jason Garrett had a show that I did. I did the Mike Zimmer show. Mm -hmm. I did the uh, Jason, uh, uh, Jay Novacek show. We did the Michael Urban show, but not when they were rookies winning one game a year mm -hmm. and not in a climate where everything you say now goes crazy. Yeah. I guarantee you, Dale Hellestray is a very funny guy. Mark Tuane, funny guy. The, the shows we did with with Novacek, Zimmer, they were they were insightful and informative and funny and maybe even controversial. Right. But they didn't spread like wildfire in creating problems the way controversial comments now do. I, I'm sure sometime in 1993, somebody's mom said something bad about the lineup, <laughs> but I don't remember it. Yeah. But I don't know that I'm ever going to get C.D. Lamb's mom saying, yeah. we need to get Dak's ass out of Dallas at, or trade C.D. Lamb to Houston, where I live, so he can play with C.J. Stroud. Right. I will never forget that. Right. Whereas the silly things that went on the radio, I, I just remember I was sitting there. I don't remember all the specifics. <laughs> Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys free agency. What do you think is their top priority as of now? Of course, um, it, it's natural to skip past the most obvious priority, which is you got to do. You do have to do your own. Right. And. Um, we can have a debate about how much credit you get for doing your own. I mean, you you have to. You're supposed to. So, yeah. so Dak, theoretically, there's no change in the plan there. We shall see. And Lamb mm -hmm. and Micah. Yes. And it's 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 easy to understand again that the importance of those three guys. The Dak contract isn't easy. There's there's issues there. There's there's different wrinkles to it. No doubt about that. But that's where you start. Uh, if you if Jerry's serious about all in, and what you think all in means, mm -hmm. hopefully is what he think it means. You think it means yeah. we're gonna go get put, some guys, get some guys, <laughs> and put stuff on the credit card, yeah. and worry about the salary cap in 2027 after we've won a Super Bowl. I don't know that that's what he meant. Uh -huh. We shall see. But uh, certainly you, you can start right at the top of the top of the market. Chris Jones. Mm -hmm. The uh, terrific defensive lineman in Kansas City is free. Now, the Chiefs say, don't worry about that. We're keeping him. <laughs> but that that's the top of the charts kind of guy. Yeah. You, you go get that kind of player, um, and you would change the culture, and you would change the structure of your defense. You can um, you can look at offensive line in that regard. Uh, I, I think looking at wide receiver in that area is fine. I do think that... There's going to be a lot of talk about running backs and running backs we've heard of, right. and there's going to be a game of musical chairs because there's a bunch of them who are going to be out there. Yeah, it's so who, interesting this year. No doubt. And a bunch of named guys yeah. who all think they're going to make $12,000, and they're not. <laughs> Somebody's going to make $3,000. Uh, three, uh, did I say 1000 I knew you meant million. $12 million. <laughs> somebody's going to make $3 million, right. and maybe that somebody ends up here. I do think, though, that the Cowboys still think that the foundation of building a roster and beating the cap is the draft. Very interesting what you just said about running backs. How do you see this all shaking out this year? Well, I mean, wouldn't it be great to have Saquon Barkley on your team? Of course. I mean, uh, wouldn't it be grand to uh, not have any concerns? Just Tony Pollard, come on back. You're, you're pretty good. Wouldn't it be cool to have Derrick Henry? One last go with yeah. Derrick Henry. Uh, these are all grand ideas. They really are. But look at Singletary in, in Houston, mm -hmm. where he bounces from being a part-time guy in Buffalo to being a part-time guy in Houston, uh, ends up being the starting guy in Houston, isn't he kind of in the same class as Tony Pollard? Mm -hmm. um, look at what we saw in the Super Bowl. Yes, Chris McCaffrey, that terrific. Unbelievable. <laughs> He's outstanding. Yeah. He cost $16 million. Yes. Pacheco costs about 16 cents. And Kansas City has won back-to-back -back Super Bowls by not spending.